Are we ready? Oh, I guess I'm. I guess I'm on. I was. I. I was. I was waiting for for a cue. Um, my name is Cecile. I come from Palm City, um, uh, Florida, uh, Martin County, the home of uh, Florida uh, Power uh, and Light, which is supposedly where this uh, natural gas from the Sable Trail pipeline is, is headed. Well, I discovered something because I know a little bit about liquefied natural gas. I come from Massachusetts, where we fought Hess Energy uh, in uh, very uh, similar uh, scenarios to what I'm seeing today. Uh, we fought Hess for over 11 years. They were planning to put a liquefied natural gas facility uh, in the heart of our city uh, on the banks of a, a river that ran through our, through, our, through our area, southeastern Massachusetts, beautiful area. And that facility was going to totally destroy the quality of life that we enjoy living on the river. So what is liquefied natural gas? Um, you're probably curious to know about uh, where, where is all this gas going to end up that, you know, you've heard so many things about the Sable Trail pipeline, the negative impacts on our environment and on our communities. And you say, gee, does the end justify the means? Well, because of my background fighting uh, for uh, with that LNG facilities for so many years I do have a little uh, understanding and some of this natural gas if not all of it or most of it is going to end up being exported so if you're not already upset you're going to be more upset by the time I finish telling you my tale of woe here what is liquefied natural gas well it's fairly simple we'll do a little scientific experiment so you get the idea you have a natural gas pipeline Kind of a poor example it's from my little uh, my little wet that the gas comes in uh, to the by the pipeline could be Florida gas transmission sable trail pipeline um, and it goes into a piece of equipment that's called a train not a choo choo it's called a train it's a piece of apparatus two things happen when this natural gas goes into this piece of apparatus. One, all the impurities are removed from it. Uh, they remove your butane, your ethane, and I say your cocaine, or whatever else they, they, they have in there. Because what the point is, you're trying to get as pure methane as possible. Methane. Uh, so, okay, so now you have, um, this process has been completed, and so now we have uh, liquefied natural gas. This is water, not LNG but it kind of looks like LNG, uh, the abbreviation for liquefied natural gas. It's colorless, it's tasteless, it's odorless. Now, what you need to know about this little bottle, in liquid form, it would take 600 bottles of gas, 600 of these, to make one of these. This has 600 times the energy of the gas, okay? Now, as long as the liquefied natural gas is in a container, they say it's perfectly safe, and I probably would agree with that. We've seen experiments where people put cigarettes out in it, and they say, look, see, it doesn't burn. And in liquid form, it's, it's probably fairly safe. The problem is what happens if this container gets breached? What happens is that the stuff starts to warm up. Liquefied natural gas is gas that has been cooled to minus 259 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to be kept cold. If, as soon as it starts warming up, it turns to back into gas because it, it's gas in a liquid state. Not a liquid in liquid state, it's gas in liquid state. So what happens is now you've got what could form uh, a flammable vapor cloud could form. It's like when you boil water on the stove and the steam comes up and you can see the cloud of steam. This is a cloud of methane that, that forms. So, for example, if you're hauling liquefied natural gas by rail and there's a rail accident, now you got a breach, you got a hole in the, in the container, the tank, and uh, the stuff is starting to warm up. You got a vapor cloud, flammable vapor cloud. What happens? Where does that vapor cloud go? This is a great example. 
Where does it go? It's blown by the wind. It's blown anywhere. It can, it's going to ignite anything in its path. As soon as it comes across a, an ignition source, it could be your cell phone, static electricity, you got a flash fire. This is a stupid idea to put this stuff on rail. And that's one of the reasons I got really, really got involved in Martin County, because they're planning on running this stuff by rail in double stacked 10,000 gallon uh, ISO containers, which is just a stupid idea. They're right now they're hauling it out of the Hialeah rail yard by truck in Miami. Through the third quarter of, the, of 2016, they already exported 540,000 gallons of our natural gas. It all went to Barbados. The Department of Energy has already authorized that millions of gallons of this stuff be exported from our deep water ports throughout the state of Florida. I looked at all the authorizations that have been approved so far, and if my math is right, we're looking at over $22 billion a year going of our natural gas, frack methane, taking people's land by eminent domain, destroying our, our environment, threatening our aquifer so that we can power Jamaica. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. The federal agency that, is, that has the authority from Congress to regulate these facilities has abdicated its responsibility. They had creative lawyers that have said, oh, these are not terminals because you're not pumping it into a ship. You're still exporting it. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is still responsible, but nobody has challenged them. People don't even know what's going on. The, they were, uh, the same company that's producing LNG in the Hialeah Rail Yard has also planned to put one of these facilities in Titusville within one mile of the Space Coast Regional Airport, which is in violation of federal law. You can't have a liquefied natural gas facility within a one mile of a runway, uh, airport runway. There are so many legal challenges that could be made with these facilities, but people don't know. They're not informed. The energy companies come into the, our neighborhoods and they do a dog and pony show. It happened. I was there in Fall River, Massachusetts. Our mayor was all excited. He was going to have the first car running on liquefied natural gas. Thank God. We had a change of, we had an election, and our new mayor knew a little something about liquefied natural gas. When we, our citizens became involved and started being educated, we fought, we fought Hess, we fought them, and by God, we won. So knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. You got to know what's going on. We need to stop the exportation of our natural gas. And John Quarterman kept saying, FERC, FERC is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They have abdicated their responsibility. What they have done isn't right. This is only happening.